So I'm going to show you how to print stencils or cut the stencils for your Pocor prints. And basically what Pocor printing is, we, we have stencils that we ink and we um, arrange on our plate. And then we lay wet paper on top. Did that's all inky, and then you will a on top, and then you voila, get a print. And even though you spend a lot of time cutting a, an intricate stencil like this, you get a lot of mileage out of it because you print it in many different ways. There's like an infinite variation, so it's not just like a one and done like a normal mono print. You have this stencil that you can keep using. And I'm asking you to cut two, you know pretty intricate or decent stencils and you need to think about them as they will be arranged together as an image or picture because when you print your Pocor print everything needs to be laid out on the plate at the same time it's not like you print it in layers or that you can duplicate or move things around so you will have everything inked up in its different ways and you will arrange the stencils in their space. I want her to open the doorknob. This. And then you lay the paper on it and you roll it through the press. So it needs to be arranged just the way you want it all at one time. Cutting stencils, I gave you some kind of shiny, slippery vinyl. You can draw directly on it. Uh, it seems to do better on the little bit more matte side to, to, to catch a drawing. And just as when you're drawing the stencil, you've got to think about what's not going to fall through. So if I was going to do an eyeball, the, you know, the, the ball would fall out. So I have to kind of compensate for the way that a stencil works so that I don't lose any pieces or else we'll get, you know, strange things happening that won't get us the look that we want. Um, I am using a, you could use something like a coloring book or a sketch for reference. I gave you a piece of uh, carbon paper. It's in your OSH kit, in your bigger folder, I think. And you're gonna locate that if you wanna try working from a drawing. Now, I'm inspired by this little coloring book I found. And basically what you do is you take your carbon paper and you put it in between the stencil paper and your drawing. And you want to make sure the logo side is up. And then you take a ballpoint pen and you press around your areas that you need to know where they are. And it will then transfer onto the stencil paper so that you know where to cut. Um, when you want to remove the stencil. So here's when I started. Um, basically, I do what I can with scissors. And then I switch to an X-Acto knife. If you don't have an X-Acto knife at home, do as much of the hard work as you can with scissors and then bring it in to finish the rest here at school. But this is the kind of thing you can do at school or at home so that we have fun with the actual printing part at school. Anyway, you get the idea and, you know, without these details or features, it just kind of looked like a blob. So make sure every time you're cutting something that it's not going to fall away or fall out. So I want to add like a shape here for the headband. And you just got to simplify a little bit. I'm not giving her eyes and nose and a mouth, but I might give her a little bit of a chin so that she... Um, kind of has an interesting shape. I'm going to simplify the feathers of her headdress and do something like that there. But yeah, that's how you cut the stencils. I want two. And then I'll have a separate video to discuss how they actually get printed. But that part, like I said, will happen at school. So don't worry about that. Just think big picture what you want this to look like. And look at my PowerPoint because there's lots of cool examples. You can also feel free to bring in items from nature for this. Um, cut more stencils than you want. And keep in mind that I'm going to have some of my stencils here for you. Do you want this guy? In case you need them. Anyway, have fun. Happy stenciling.